No, that's a primero. And she would coil around my hand, you know, 
and I prepare her for my little secret. And that's when I got over my fear of snakes. I'm fear free. <laughs> I want to ask you about the treatment you wrote in 85, 86 about um, for the third nightmare movie, Freddy's Dollhouse. Do you remember that? Uh, in 85, 86? Yeah, you wrote a script, script oh. about um, the I don't know if, if, if it was a prequel of the original, but it was called Freddy's Dollhouse. The script I wrote mm -hmm. yeah. would have been at the same time as they were preparing Nightmare 3, The Green Warriors. And my idea was the character from Nightmare 1, Tina, who was dragged on the ceiling and killed in front of her lover by Freddy that her sister, a college student at the university, always wanted to solve her sister's death, Tina's death. How did that happen? What happened? And the movie would have been her trying to solve the killing of Tina like a girl detective, like Nancy Drew, and trying to, and, and discover all of the backstory of Freddy Krueger and the Elm Street children. Thank you. And I never made it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I was asked to do the movie in 
I used up a lot of energy. My wife Nancy and I spent over a year scouting locations in Italy. And I used up a lot of my asks, my juice, my, uh, say DJ, uh, my personality and friends and favors to get people like Christopher Lee, Donald Sutherland, and uh, Amanda Plummer, and other actors to be in my movie. And then the recession hit, and the money all went away. And, uh, and so did a year of my life. And I'm not getting any younger, so it's hard for me to invest myself in that kind of development. I just like to go where, where I'm wanted, where I'm asked. I go home when I get back from Sitges. I go immediately to work doing voiceovers for DreamWorks. And um, I have a new Halloween horror uh, show about the history of horror in the cinema called The Compendium of Horror on the Epix channel. You can all see it now. Uh, I love doing the narration on that. We use the Universal Archives. We have images you've never seen of Carla, Nagosi, Bob Cheney, Elsa Lancaster, The Bride of Frankenstein. Great stuff. So I, I just sort of go where I'm wanted now. And I love to be wanted. It's <laughs> just yes. <laughs> you are. And we are, we are eager to watch that documentary that show. Compendium. Okay, so this is a bit of a weird question. So, from your own perspective, from the perspective of the 1980s horror icon, how do you see horror cinema today? Do you think that magic can be recreated, or we're just thriving on nostalgia? This is like no taking us anywhere. How do you see that? Well, we were just talking over here, all of us, and here. This festival that I am fortunate enough to have seen, I think it was sooner later this week, um, Hatchet, Eagle, Brandon, incredible. The performances by the lead actress and the, and the young girl, perfect. The film is a masterpiece, completely fresh, completely original. So I know there's great horror um, being made now. A lot of it, you guys have to find it now. You have to seek it out. Because what they're telling you to watch all the time are the superheroes. They want you just to, you know, they spend all the money on superhero movies. And those are fine. I have friends who are superheroes. <laughs> but you have to seek these movies out, like The Hatching. Two performances I recommend to you. There's an actor, I think his name is Paul Michael Hauser. He's in a new show, it's either on Netflix or Apple TV, called Blackbird. Con Reyota a su padre. It's the best serial killer I've ever seen. It's amazing. And then again, the actress in Hatching and the new, oh, you feel dirty. We feel dirty from watching it. My wife took a shower after she watched it. <laughs> but the new main series about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Oh, and that actor, uh, uh, Evan Peters, brilliant. He's also on American Horror Story and Mayor of Easttown. He does the best drum scene I've ever seen. This guy is amazing. So, for this Halloween season, after you've had your fill of Dracula, and Freddy, and Jason, and Michael Myers, and, and Frankenstein, and the Wolfman, check out Blackbird. Check out Dahmer. Check out Hatchet. <laughs> ¿Conoces al pasaje del terror del Hotel Kruger de Barcelona? Y 
la otra es cuál es tu película de los formulados. I see. 
tea and beer. I'd been sitting out as a real horse, so I sort of began to find the voice for Freddie from that moment doing the makeup. And I had no idea. Even after we made um, Nightmare on Elm Street, no idea that we would be as popular. And we were an international hit to me, the Alphonse, you know. But I didn't know that for, until a year later, uh, because I was also doing a big television show at the same time, uh, Visibles. And uh, I, I, it was sort of a one too much for my career. People learned my name, Robert Ingram, to go with my face, which they knew. And I became an international actor. Uh, now I've done, well, I've done uh, one, two, 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 two or three movies in Espana, many movies in Italy, London, uh, Russia. I work all over Europe, Romania. Uh, I've worked in uh, Bulgaria, and uh, I, I just I love the, that international travel and working within other cultures. You know, it's just a great, what I call it, a gift to an actor's career. Because you have done a lot of things before and after Freddy, and we know that Freddy is great, but Robert is even greater. So how it feels? Like how it feels to always be asked about Freddy about no, no. Here's the look. Basically, what my job is in the world is to say other people's words. And to wear other people's clothes. I'm just an actor. There's people out here that are doctors, nurses. You guys are in tech. You make the world go round. I don't. I'm an actor. What they used to call a player. They used to call us the players in the theater, in the opera. The players present. Hamlet gives advice to the players. <coughs> player to play. That's what we do when we're children. And I am so grateful that what I've chosen to be, the world I am, I'm, in, I'm one of those people that the rest of you let play. As you have grown older, and you go out in the world to become paramedics, or doctors, or whatever important job you have, you let some of us continue to play like we did when we were children. You'd go to somebody's house to play in their yard because they knew how to have the best games or something. And we're still allowed to play and pretend. And that thing you did when you were a child where you pretended to be in Game of Thrones or you pretended to fight a dragon or you pretended to be in Lord of the Rings or you pretended to be a famous knight going on the crusades. We still get to do that. We get to pretend and you get to watch us because I think it's something we all need to do. It's, it's one, it's um, an escape we all need. And I'm just grateful that I'm allowed to do this. And so, when you have something like Visitors or something like Nightmare on Elm Street that captures the imagination of so many people in so many different cultures. Uh, I'm happy and grateful for that. I've done over 90 movies, almost 100 movies, and probably 30 of them are horror movies. But I'm known as a horror actor after Morris Karloff and after Long Chaney, Bella Lugosi, Christopher Lee, 
Peter Cushing and Vincent Price, after these actors, I'm one of the actors that you guys chose to be in that world. And uh, I'm honored to have my name even mentioned in the same breath as those great actors. And, uh, you know, I don't just do horror movies. And I, and I do lots of things out of makeup. But uh, I still try to do at least one horror movie a year just for the fans. Because it's the fans and that kind of film has been so good to me.
episodes of television and even some things you can streaming and even watch on your phone. Sure. But not Avatar. Not Lords of Arabia. Not do these are meant to be seen in that ratio or as close to that ratio as you can get it. You know, people die making those movies so that you can be so that you can see that sandworm coming way in the distance. You know, so that's my that's my pet peeve. But uh, I think we're okay, and I think horror is okay, and science fiction is okay, and uh, I, I, I think fantasy is okay. I think we're going to be just fine. I just saw Idris Alba as a genie with Tilda Swinton. I finally watched the 2020 War of the Worlds uh, with a sort of black mirror robot, alien dogs. You know, and they're, they're, I mean, I'm catching up too. I'm a little behind too. And they're both, I'm so glad I watched both of them, you know, just before I came here. Uh, but I, I think, I don't know if we're in a renaissance of horror and fantasy and science fiction, but I know we're in good hands with really good directors. And uh, I think we need to seek out some of the smaller stuff on our own. Do our own, what we call due diligence. Make our own effort to seek out and find some stuff. Is there some cool stuff out there? Thank you. Freak Out with Ryan Reynolds 
which you can watch over and over again. The frame is so full of little jokes and Easter eggs and little hidden things. It's a movie you can watch several times. Uh, and Sean is just a genius. Uh, and he brought a wonderful actor from Stranger Things into Free Guy, Joe Keeley, who is so wonderful on the show. Uh, and uh, I, I think he has a bright future as well. And I'm just, you know, happy. I'm an old man, I'm 75 years old, and people are still asking for me uh, to work. So um, it was just a, a privilege to be part of a, a, a number one, you know, hit show. Bueno, hemos llegado al tiempo previsto. ¿Qué falta? Una, una última. Ya, esta sí es la última. Don't give them that. 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 Compendium of Horror, which I, I know everybody here will like. It's just great, smart, uh, documentary work about the history of horror in movies. Also, I have a little low-budget horror movie coming out, uh, starring Danielle Harris from Halloween, and uh, uh, yours truly, gosh, I'm forgetting, uh, Bill, William, oh, I'm forgetting Bill's name, William is from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm having a mind fart. And, uh, but uh, it's called Natty Knox. Knox, right? Natty Knox. And Natty is short for Natalie. Natalia. And Natalie is a Roger Corman, 1960s, B-movie, Scream Queen. And when she loses her beauty, she comes back to her hometown, and something terrible happens to her, and she begins to haunt part of the town. And uh, I, at the parts I'm playing now, I'm the, I'm the old guy that tells the backstory, <laughs> just like Stranger Things. You know, I'm playing the old priest, the old doctor, the old lawyer. Uh, I think in this one, the old real estate guy. <laughs> but uh, it's directed by Dwight Little, who directed me in Phantom of the Opera. And also, I believe Dwight uh, has worked on many extraordinary uh, projects. Very talented director. For many, many years, he was the house director on the TV show Bones. But he's very, very good. And Dwight and I, uh, we got back together again and we worked on this project. And uh, I think it's going to be coming out next year. Yeah, Natty Knox, but it's going to be a good little down and dirty war movie. Pues muy buena pregunta, la verdad, para cerrar esto. Y nos ha dado unas pistas de cosas que no tenemos que perdernos. Muchas gracias. Os pido un super aplauso.